I want to tell you about the ancient history of this land. Thousands of years ago, perhaps as many as 70,000, there was an ice age that extended from Wisconsin to Terre Haute, with our area as the southern boundary line extending across Indiana. Glacial till was deposited here, which means that the ice actually melted on this land and also formed a glacial lake. The glacial till created optimal conditions for timber management and thus a forest was born. And here is what Mother Theodore would say about this forest when she arrived. What was our astonishment to find ourselves still in the midst of the forest? No village, not even a house in sight. It seemed to Mother Theodore that they had come to bury themselves in the wilderness for what prospect of a school where there were no families, no population. What ground was there for works of mercy in such a place? These mental inquiries passed through her mind as she trod for the first time in the forest soil, which she would cultivate and make flourish for temporal and spiritual good. But a few years later, on her return from France, Mother Theodore would say, Finally, on the fifth day, with a inexpressible joy, I saw once more my Indiana. I would have loved to kiss its soil. The beauty of the forests of Indiana surpasses all description. This land was no longer for me the land of exile. It was the portion of my inheritance, and in it I hope to dwell all the days of my life. In time, Mother Theodore would call her sisters Daughters of the Forest, suggesting a profound intimacy with this land. It should be no surprise, then, that today, White Violet Center for Eco-Justice, a sponsored ministry of the Sisters of Providence, manages more than 300 acres of our property as classified forest. Classified forests are areas of 10 acres or more supporting a growth of native or planted trees, which have been set aside for the production of timber and wildlife, the protection of watersheds, or the control of soil erosion. Providing sufficient food for the sisters and the academy students seemed never far from Mother Theodore's mind, and although she was a renowned educator, her diary is filled with comments regarding the farm and gardening. Perhaps her proudest moment was on November 27, 1841. Ah, we are now in sole possession of the farm. Our first potatoes are planted today. We trace a plan for a kitchen garden near our little dwelling. The hay is being mown. The hay is gathered and stacked. A cellar has been dug under our house for our winter fruit and vegetables. We are shucking the corn, work which takes seven days. We have about 600 bushels. In 1994, the Sisters of Providence began to eliminate pesticides and herbicides on their almost 1,200 acres, including 343 acres of farmland and about five acres of gardens and orchards. In June 1996, when White Violet Center was established, the first priority was to allow the land owned by the Sisters of Providence to heal, to return to the organic methods of our founders and her companions. White Violet Center's organically certified garden produces food for both the Sisters of Providence and for others who purchase shares, and through the farmer's market in Terre Haute. In the early days, the Sisters would sell some of their apples in town, an early form of farmer's market. They also had an herb garden and would trade rosemary water in town in exchange for the medicine needed. Under Mother Theodore's skilled direction, a pharmacy to serve the constant dispensing of remedies to the people of the countryside was erected and stocked with tisans, infusions of dried flowers, herbs, roots, and spices. Simple remedies and herbs. It was a source of great help and security and did much good for many years. We have gone out several times this summer 
to gather simples and linden blossoms. In each excursion, we discover something marvelous, beautiful, and useful in the magnificent forests of Indiana. At each step, we can admire the grandeur, the power, the goodness of God. I love our woods and solitude very much. In Mother Theodore's time, there were a number of native wild animals and domestic livestock. Mother Theodore recorded in her diary. Our peacock died today. Animals of every kind are the quiet possessors of the woods. And here also are the hummingbird and a multitude of other birds. The stag and the doe are not at all frightened at our approach. There is one creature, however, whose confidences we would willingly dispense with, and that is the serpent. There are specimens of all colors and sizes. On the way back from Madison, Indiana, Mother Theodore writes, Loss of sleep and rough roads of this route have disturbed my stomach a little, together with the hot bread and butter. I am not sick. Those good little boiled squirrels at St. Mary's will quickly put me all right when I get there. In the early days, sheep roamed near the church and Sister Raymond carted the wool from the sheep. Mother Theodore's diary records, I give wool to be spun at 18 cents a pound. Livestock is part of our history here from the beginning. Livestock is critical to the organic principle of putting back what we take out. Animals have a healing effect on the land, especially gentle animals like the alpacas. Alpacas were brought to St. Mary of the Woods in 1998 because they're a no-kill animal and could be gentle on the land. The manure would provide natural fertilizer for organic farming, and their fiber would bring a profit. Alpacas provide one of the world's finest natural fibers. They are clean, safe, quiet, intelligent, and disease resistant. We don't card wool from sheep today, but our alpaca fiber is carded, spun, and knitted or woven into hats, scarves, socks, mittens, and other wearable items for purchase. Some of the alpaca fibers felted and crafted into wall hangings. And what of our most recent addition to our animal family, the chickens? Community history tells us that Sister Ann Joseph Morris, who was also a keeper of the bees, raised 2,000 chickens as well. The pen of leghorn cockerels exhibited at the State Fair in 1930 won all five prizes of their class. The pen of white Plymouth Rock won first prize, and the pen of young rocks won fourth and fifth prizes. We have only a few dozen chickens right now, but who knows what the future will bring. In the Sisters of Providence Constitution are the words, This particular religious congregation is called into being by God to participate as a community in extending the providential designs of God to all creation. We celebrate the work of White Violet Center and the many other efforts going on in the Wabash Valley to attend to our wounded earth. And I challenge you to be daughters and sons of the forest. Today, modern day daughters of the forest express Mother Theodore's values, spirituality, and appreciation for the land and the natural world through the works of White Violet Center and our land ethic, an ethic that was adopted in 2012. It enlarges the boundaries of the community to include soils, waters, 
plants and animals, or collectively, the land. It attempts to take into account both the needs of the community and the sacredness of the land, and states the beliefs, principles, and values that will guide decision-making. It is the intent of this land ethic to reflect the knowledge that our relationship to Earth is a moral imperative, involving the question of what is just and good for the present and for the future of the whole Earth community. The land ethic affirms that as members of one sacred Earth community, we Sisters of Providence commit ourselves individually and communally to care for our resources. We will conserve natural resources and preserve species unique to an area. We will make every effort to use non-toxic materials that will not poison Earth community in the present or in the future. We will promote conservation and reduction of consumption by recycling and purchasing recycled materials. We will practice conservation and restoration of land through food production, management of forests and wild spaces, and healing and rehabilitation of diminished areas. We will be advocates for ethical principles in resource use at local, state, national, and global levels. The land ethic, like White Violet Center, is an expression of our spirituality, a spirituality that understands that everything is interrelated and interconnected, that sustainability is a moral and religious concern.